Hi guys, you're watching channel Mr. Electron and this what you see is a high voltage transformer from a CRD TV. Now here in this video, I'm not going to make a high voltage supply but a low voltage high current supply which I'm basically going to use for the solar panel like it produces 18 volts and I'm planning on converting that 18 volts to 12 or like 13 volts and increase the current for the decrease in voltage and thus achieving maximum power utilization now guys I'm going to use these two wires for the primary high current winding of the transformer with a size thickness of 0 0.70 mm and I'm going to use two of these as one so guys this is the plastic piece on which I am going to perform the primary and secondary winding part well guys the process is simple this is the starting end of the wire and this is the end point of the wire okay let's give it a turn over here as well so the starting the ending now keep them like this and then move the wire like this to find the middle of the wire this is the middle part okay so after we have found the middle part we will give a little turn over here like this to differentiate from the rest of the wire okay so it is going to be something like this now take the plastic piece okay and this is going to be the first piece that is going to fit the plastic so let's place it in the middle which i suppose is this one and then from the side lock it so this is locked over here as you can see and now starts the winding part now guys take the first pair of wires and start turning it in the clockwise direction until the wire finishes off one turn completes over here So guys here I have achieved around 14 turns okay after that give a cut like this so half of the first winding is complete now turn it like this and then place an insulation sheet and start your first turn. So the 14 tones for this one have also completed. Take it from here and fold it. Yeah. Okay, so the primary winding is done guys. Now comes the secondary. Now guys, with that being done, let's move on to the secondary high current winding, low voltage. So I'm going to use this wire and its size is, it is around 0.55 mm. Okay, so the first wire that I used was 0 0.70 and this is 0.55 but I doubled the first wire and here I quadrupled it so in turn the overall output current is going to be higher for this one so let's complete the winding process so for that I'm going to this time wound the wire on the other side you see this side is for the primary low current high voltage and this side is for secondary low voltage high current okay so let's turn these two like this and move it in this groove and place it like this to make it steady and done now comes the insulation sheet okay done and now starts our 
second rewinding now that's one turn and in total we have to give 10 turns this time 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the last 10 and bringing it down here like this and done so guys the transformer process is almost complete now comes our ferrite core you see there is a little gap over here that's a little bad news because this is going to like reduce its efficiency by four or five percent well I think I can do a little better at least I can uh, remove that unwanted motion by placing a tape at the ends same for this one okay and guys it is also recommended to create a gap like uh, the two cores should not be touching each other okay so this is also going to perform that function and here we have a little more and voila the gap is created now it is not a complete joint okay yeah quite stiff this is done now comes this and done looks beautiful doesn't it well guys during the transformer construction part i have already showed you the little flaws that i have intentionally left on the transformer to see the efficiency difference that it causes when i remove all the flaws and go exactly by the book the first flaw is that the core thickness is smaller than the bore size of the plastic holding the windings that is the first the second one is the overlapping of the winding wires one over the other at certain points that can also reduce the efficiency the third one is i'm not sure if it is actually the flaw which is the air gap like i have provided the air gap between the two cores the core has been divided into two parts i have provided an air gap so i would like to see what effect it has on the efficiency input and output the fourth one is that the length of the plastic holding the winding does not matches the length of the ferrite core and guys the fifth which is the most important one is that if i had used a toroidal core ferrite toroidal core then all of these flaws would have been eliminated except for the winding overlap part the toroidal core does not has any air gap so uh, the flux density is maximum here as you can see if you look closely there is a paper gap provided and in between this piece you already know that i have given black tape separation so the separation is that and now comes the soldering so these two wires are the final output wires to which i'm going to connect these two black wires okay 
and uh, after telling you all this you people might be thinking why am i proceeding with the project when i know that it has so many uh, flaws now that is because i want to know the difference if i had gone proper all the way and if i carry on improper procedures and then check the efficiency yeah now the input wires three one in this joint okay you see the copper wire is coming and joining over here second this one and third this one these three are still left out which will be connected to a circuit and i believe that you are already familiar with this circuit of mine which i used for my previous inverter project now guys the construction part of this entire circuit will be provided with the help of links provided in the description you can check it out from there part one part two like that and now comes the part of connecting this transformer to the circuit now these two red wires that you see these will be connected to the input side which is this one okay and uh, these will be connected to the outer section like this wire we will leave this one and this one will be connected over here to this one okay and we will leave this one because this is the tapping point it's a center tap transformer so positive supply will be given at this point this one connected this piece will be connected over here to this one this also connected Find the left out terminal is the only one centered app, okay, to which positive supply will be given, which I've already told you. And I also have a connecting wire for this one, an extension, blue one, yeah. Done. Now guys, at the moment I'm testing the output efficiency, so instead of a solar panel as the input, I'm going to use this 12 volt 7 AH battery to see the current increment from input side to the output side if there is any or if it needs modification this blue wire that you see is the positive center tap is always positive okay so positive is this one so positive has been connected negative still left out and these are the final output terminals from the transformer and remember that the output is going to be AC because no bridge rectifier has been connected yet. I already have it here, but I will connect it afterwards first. Let's see if it if every connection is perfect. So let's do the multimeter check, pointing the meter towards 200 volts AC mode, okay? Because the output is going to be mm -hmm. AC. So guys, the terminals have been connected. It's time to turn on the supply and see how much voltage it is converting. Like input is 12 volts, okay? We will see how much output voltage this transformer is stepping it down to okay you see it is 9.2 once again 9.2 volts is what this circuit is stepping down 12 volts from 12 to 9.2 volts but there is one thing that needs to be noticed that there is no hissing sound from the transformer now this is the no load okay so i'm going to measure the current that this circuit is drawing from the battery at no load Pointing the meter at 600 amperes mode, okay, DC current. Yeah, this is the input because the positive from the battery is getting over here. So this is one of the input wires. That is why I have connected the meter over here, okay. You see, the no load current is very high, around 3.5 amperes is wasted just for reducing a voltage, okay. That is really bad. So we have to reduce that. So what I have in mind, let's remove this gapping because I have done that previously and it affected the output a lot. You see, the first capping has been removed. Bring it aside and yeah, now testing it again. This time the cores are at a short circuit. The current has reduced to 3.29 amperes, yeah, which is lesser than before at least. So what we learn from this is that the closer the cores are to each other, without any gap in between, the more is the flux density and induction in the coil. So that was my main part because of which I left all those flaws in this transformer so that you can learn from it. Now let's remove our second flaw, which is the taping. Now they say that taping improves uh, like permeability and all but finally it's all for the efficiency so yeah now it is fully naked no insulation so let's place it now done and done great now let's try it and see how much current it is drawing at no load okay 
you see the current input has reduced considerably from 3.20 sorry from 3.29 amperes to only 1.29 once again no load input current has reduced to 1.22 pretty good for me at least it is very good now i've already showed you my kbpc 3510 bridge rectifier which i'm going to connect to the output because now i have to convert the transformer output to dc from ac the ac wires have been connected and yellow wires are the ones that are going to carry dc you can see this yellow wire here is positive and the other one is automatically the negative capacitor connected time to start the test first come to the current testing now i have a car headlamp bulb this is a 55 watts bulb okay 12 volts 55 watts let's do the testing with this one shit be aware of the charge left in the capacitor always let's see if there is no short circuit yeah no short circuit now it's time to connect it Wow, the bulb is glowing and the circuit is handling the load. But we also have to measure for the efficiency, the intake and the output of the current. So once again, the current test at the input. Once again, charging it. Around 3.20 amps. 3.20 amps is what this circuit is drawing when loaded from the battery now let's see what it is giving out yeah the output current is 3.10 and the input current was around 3.17 uh, or uh, like 20 as far as i remember okay Now guys, I want to finish off the video by showing you how the circuit performs when I connect this giant electric car, electric bike, DC motor to the circuit and battery. Let's see if it can start it. Okay. Correct. Right. And I've also removed the capacitor over here. 